That is pretty cool. So I didn't really expect to find some. So very surprised to find these huge winter chanterelles growing in February here in Washington State, but they're definitely out there. Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to the channel, my name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the uh, creator of Mushroom Wonderland on YouTube and on Instagram. And I'm also the vice president of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. I've been foraging and hunting for mushrooms for most of my life since I was a little kid. And right now we're in uh, kind of middle to late uh, February of 2022. Just me and my dog Gunner. And we're taking a walk through the forest. We're going to see what kind of mushrooms are growing out here. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And hit that notification bell so you can see when the new videos come out. Come along with me into Mushroom Wonderland in February. And let's see what other kind of mushrooms we can find still growing out here. In between the dead of winter and the very first dawning of spring. Thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. As I look over here uh, into this tangle of branches and stuff, I can see a conch mushroom growing right down here. So what we got right down here is known as Fomitopsis ochracea. Let's have a closer look at it. It is another uh, conifer wood decayer, so it's decaying this downed uh, hemlock log right here. And uh, it's chewing it up from the inside out. And this is just a fruiting body. So underneath here, it produces spores. And it's dropping these spores out onto the forest right here. Some of them get caught in the wind, or now I've got millions of them on my hands and I can smear them other places and maybe get some more of these mushrooms to grow. But a uh, pretty common one here in the Northwest. This one's just another tree conch chewing away at the decaying matter here in the northwest and not of too much value to humans as far as consuming it as it is like a, a piece of bark or something but there you go Fomitopsis ochracea this is one of your common conchs that are growing on trees here in the pnw and uh it's doing a good job keeping the decaying matter keeping these logs breaking down and going back into the forest becoming soil again for something else to grow on Gosh, look at what we found here. Wow, surprising. <laughs> look at the size of this thing. Look at these, kind of strange looking. And yeah, they're a bit old, but these are a valuable edible, a delicious edible. These are known as Craterellus tubeformis, or the yellowfoot or winter chanterelle. Check this out or yellowfoot chanterelles. You can see why it's called a yellowfoot. See how yellow the foot is? And it's got these really complex veiny gills under here that are decurrent. You can see how they run down the stipe like that. Look at the size of that one. So that's a really big winter chanterelle or a yellowfoot. Big, beautiful mushrooms growing here off of dead wood like they do, but they're also a ectomycorrhizal mushroom. So growing here with this hemlock or fir tree. One of these trees are supporting this these mushrooms. And look at this, in February, some huge yellowfoot, uh, beautiful winter chanterelles, although they're a little past their prime. Uh, you could probably still eat these guys. And, uh, you know, nature has a way of kind of preserving things when they continue to grow. So. I see more up there, but uh, that is pretty cool. 
So very surprised to find these huge winter chanterelles growing in February here in Washington state, but they're definitely out there and you could probably still eat these, although I'm probably gonna leave these behind in the forest to uh, do their thing, spread their spores and give back to the woods. So cool find though, winter chanterelles. These are very faded and washed out by all the rain water, so not the best specimens, but uh, definitely a handful of mushrooms good for the eating, if you are so inclined. growing right here on this coniferous log laying right here on the side of the trail. This is one variety of witch's butter. This is the Dacromyces, the conifer witch's butter. So it grows these um, really orange lobes of gelatinous kind of goo on the logs. And I've talked about them in other videos. And uh, the uh, Tremella mesertineca is usually growing as a parasite on sterium mycelium. So kind of a complex life situation. This is a pretty common mushroom here in the winter in the Pacific Northwest. This is Dacromyces chrysospermus. The texture is a little bit weird. I have tasted it and it tasted to me a little bit like pineapples or sweet like a uh, like a uh, black truffle but a uh, pretty common one and you can impress your friends and family by knowing the name of this. Uh, just calling it witch's butter or you could call it Dacromyces chrysospermus. Wow, so check out this mushroom. I've talked about these in previous videos, but it's always cool to run across one, especially this late in the season because this mushroom has been growing for months and months. And one thing about these mushrooms is that they actually gain value when they get really ancient and old like this. And this is a really big one. And so I know some people out there would be excited to find this. And uh, this is known as the Dyer's polypore or Phaeolus schwannitzii. So this mushroom can be used to dye protein fabric. So when I say protein fabric, I mean like silk, and wool, um, even chiffon works, but animal made fabrics like that really take this kind of dye well. And that's not to say that it won't dye other um, types of fabric, but uh, this will make a beautiful green color and a brown color. And when you add mordants into the boiling water that you put this mushroom in, it can actually alter the color of the dye that it's making. And so back in ancient times, they would dye a lot of clothing and fabric with this mushroom, the Phaeolus schwannitzii, or the dyer's polypore, known for its dyeing capabilities. And when they're young, they're actually not that great for dyeing from what I understand. But when you find an ancient one like this, that's old and all of its pigments have came out, this mushroom is valuable for dying and uh, somebody would be happy to take this thing. I mean, look at it. It's interesting, it gets the branches just totally grown through it. So it actually like fuses around branches and sticks and twigs and it grows in these beautiful uh, concentric spirals. When it's young, it can even look like the fur of a deer antler, but when it grows older, it looks like a just a chunk of wood or something laying here. And unless you have a trained eye a little bit, you wouldn't recognize this Dyer's polypore growing right here. So beautiful mushroom, cool find. And if you're interested in trying things with mushrooms other than eating them, dyeing fabric with mushrooms is definitely one. And you can find big treasures like this out in the forest right now in February in the Pacific Northwest. Look right here on the stump, there's more of the Phaeolus schwannitzii or the Dyer's polypore growing right here. They love growing on the dead wood, so. If I was a dyer, I'd be pretty excited about all these polypores that I'm finding out here. So it is hailing now here in Western Washington. 
and this is indicative of spring weather but we're just here in February still but uh I love extreme weather and I love the Northwest because we have such a diversity of weather so making things interesting out here with some hail falling how cool up there you see that log let's go look let's go see what's up there what is this wow check out this log crazy this thing was growing right here snapped off and down with it came a lot of these mushrooms I've talked about these in other videos so hopefully you're catching on this is a big, big flush of them. Beautiful, look at the, the examples here. So let's take a look at these defining characteristics. It looks a little bit like a cartoon turkey tail. So this is called the Tremetes versicolor or the turkey tail mushroom. And uh, they have this white pore surface underneath the bottom. You will see little pores there, little tiny holes all over in that. That is one way you um, can differentiate from the sterium which is the false turkey tail looks a lot like uh, the bottom of the sterium looks just like the top of the cap really but these ones white poor surface underneath and uh, they have those concentric ring zones these are known as the uh, Tremetes versicolor turkey tail very medicinal mushroom been finding a lot of those this year so they're out like crazy this one's a little bit older and faded but uh, these are definitely a good medicinal mushroom if you want to collect these. Ah, whenever you find trees down, you're likely to find mushrooms. And here's an example of that false turkey tail I was talking about. So these could be confused for the turkey tail, but this one does not have the white pores underneath, you see? It's just smooth like the top, so false turkey tail, sterium. And this is growing on a uh, deciduous log. This is alder, just like the other one was, uh, within 100 feet of each other. So false turkey tail growing in the same forest as the real turkey tail. Just foraging in the northwest folks yep you're gonna get wet sometimes bring a hoodie with you a raincoat you know if you're out mushroom hunting at any time mushrooms are growing you know mushrooms love rain straight up I mean that's the recipe for mushrooms where does it rain a lot that's where you're gonna find a lot of mushrooms and so uh, be prepared folks you know I'm warm and toasty and dry right now and uh, loving it So this kind of forest is just my favorite kind of forest to come looking for mushrooms when I want to find some mushrooms to ID or to forage or to even take home to eat. And it's these coniferous forests here in the PNW. When I say PNW, I mean Pacific Northwest because that's what region we are in the United States, right up in the top left corner. So if you're new to mushroom foraging and you're looking for the right type of forest to find the most mushrooms in, my personal suggestion would be one of these beautiful conifer forests that we have so many of here on the west side of the Cascade Mountains in Washington State. Look right down here. And there is, oh, some beautiful alpine jelly cones. You see that? Gwipiniopsis, uh, kind of another uh, genus of these um, boogery jelly-like mushrooms. These ones look like uh, actual little 
cap and stem mushrooms. So, uh, yeah, this mushroom is very small, grow on little tiny conifer twigs, usually not any bigger than an inch or two around. So yeah, kind of a cool mushroom, Gwipiniopsis alpina, I believe is what it's called, or the alpine jelly cone, and if you look, it's got, uh, look like little tiny jelly mushrooms, so they're kind of like the, uh, kind of like the witch's butter, the Dacromyces, but this one grows in these tiny little, they look like little cap and stem mushrooms, uh, known as the alpine jelly cone. Because I guess they grow up in really high elevations, but they grow also all the way down here to sea level. And that's based on another European taxonomy, so they could potentially be something that hasn't been named yet. But kind of cute little jelly fungi, the uh, Gwipiniopsis alpina, or the alpine jelly cone. Oh, look right here, a healthy conch. This one is the Fomitopsis monsiae. Look at how it's growing. So this is the Fomitopsis monsiae. Look how that puppy's growing. That is thick with two C's. Beautiful. Red-belted conch. Kind of a stranger variation. You could maybe confuse this for a Ganoderma, but it, it definitely doesn't have that varnished color on it. Most common mushroom here in the PNW. It's gonna be growing on a evergreen tree like this hemlock right here. Uh, that means this tree is dead inside. All right. Heading onward. So it's been raining a little while now, so we're heading back toward the truck, but I looked down on the side of the trail on this log laying here and uh, and come across something kind of cool. You see that? That's the yellow jelly antler. How cool is that? Let's take a closer look at this. There you go, there's your yellow jelly antler. Look at that, you can see why it's called that. Um, and this is uh, in the same family as witch's butter. It's also another jelly-like kind of fungus, and uh, it's not considered edible. It's mostly considered inedible because of its waxy-like texture, but you can definitely see where it gets the, uh, the name uh, yellow jelly antler because it looks like a little antler, and they're gelatinous. Pretty cool little mushroom to find. You could confuse this, I guess, with a really tiny golden ramiria, but, uh, but this one likes to grow in the winter. I've seen a bit of this growing here. In January and February so the yellow jelly antler um, it's just chewing away at the insides of this wood and doing its job as a fungus to help break down the decaying matter here in the forest so it's a saprophytic mushroom one that eats decaying matter so yeah it's a cool little mushroom Hey guys, so we definitely found some cool mushrooms out here today in winter in Western Washington in February. And so the winter chanterelles, the turkey tails, the false turkey tails, the dyer's polypore, along with some different conch mushrooms. So if you're interested in mushrooms, they're still growing out here in the forest of the PNW, and you can learn all about them here. Hit that subscribe button to Mushroom Wonderland, and we'll see you next time. Much love, everyone. Thank you.